looks like there's some follow on buying this morning as well there you have it 55 points in the green for the nifty friday was a solid session for our markets but today things are fairly quiet at the index level we need to see more volume participation but as of now lot of price participation larger stocks are seeing a lot of interest today this is uh, a absolutely flat flat session but uh, sectors are doing well some sectors are under pressure the sectors which are doing well are autos psu banks real estate uh, the sectors which are under pressure are fmcg it metals that uh, we are going to end uh, near the high point of the day after middling through the most of the session Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18. You're watching Markets Today, the show where we track six hours of the day's trading action in five headlines. I'm Sonia Shinoy and here are all the headlines for the day. A last hour recovery helped the Sensex and the Nifty end in the green. Financial stocks led the rally. Mid-caps outperformed blue chips today. Crude oil spikes after a surprise decision by the OPEC Plus to cut output by 1.16 million barrels per day from May. Analysts say this move could push prices to $100 a barrel mark by year end. The news helps oil producers ONGC and Oil India clock gains while stocks of oil users witness some pressure. And Motown sales for March are a mixed bag. Sales of passenger vehicles marginally declined quarter on quarter for Maruti Suzuki, but SUV sales shine. The auto major sounds a note of caution. says there are red flags for the auto sector which could hit demand however commercial vehicles show strong positive demand momentum while two wheeler domestic sales see double digit growth in march and the deferral of the apm price revision pushes igl and mgl lower gas committee chair kirit parekh says that he's hopeful of the cabinet clearing most of the panel's recommendations soon tells cnbc tv 18 that the time frame for this remains unknown and in stocks and news a strong quarterly business update pushes csb bank higher while a week one hurts karnataka bank meanwhile time techno plus rallies after an important regulatory nod well here's the lineup of what we have in store for you in the next half an hour in market opinion we have ed yardeni the president of yardeni research in corporate voices we have shashank shrivastava of maruti suzuki and himant sikka of mnm on the auto industry Okay it's a power packed lineup in the next half an hour but before all of that let's get to the day's trading action a last star recovery helped the lal street end at the day's high the nifty and the sensex ended a quarter of a percent in the green it was financials that led from the front with the nifty bank gaining half a percent the mid caps also outperformed the benchmark indices bse companies gained a market capitalization of over 1.5 lakh crore rupees in fact the great going because it was the second day running that the bulls were in complete control of the market prashant is here with the day's trading action prashant over to you well decent gains for the market by close the market started on a positive note gave up all gains went into the negative stayed flat for the bulk of the session and towards the end in the last 30 minutes of trade it picked up again and we came almost close to where we started the opening level that is uh, was you know the index was shot off that level by about 20 30 points banks have been the stronger part of the market and today was no different once again uh, bank nifty ending about a half a percent higher Uh, now, mid caps and small caps on Thursday and Friday last week have been doing uh, what did very well. Mid caps were flat, but small caps uh, uh, did uh, you know continued the momentum on the upside, and that's the reason why the broader market advance decline ratio, etc., was also pretty favourable. Let me come to sectors. Autos did quite well. I'll come to stocks there in a bit. CPSC, the government companies, packed it quite okay, and as I said, both public and private sector banks uh, really stood out. Now, nifty gains coming through in uh, sec- in stocks like Hero, Coal India, Bajaj Auto, Maruti, and Divi's Laboratories. Oil popped up, right? I mean, Sunday evening after that OPEC announcement this morning, we woke up to oil prices up five percent. Uh, the oil marketing companies on your screen down as a result. The broader market uh, looking quite okay. RVNL, JBM Auto, Atul Auto, TTK Healthcare, Dhani, Gati. Uh, these were some of the volume led gainers. They were losers as well. KPIT Tech on the back of a brokerage downgrade. SRF was lower. The Adani pack, uh, you know, more down than up today. Adani Green case in point. MGL Policy Bazaar were a few names. The Nifty after today's move and the move that we've seen last Thursday and Friday stands exactly at the 40-day exponential moving average for the Nifty, which is the first level it needs to take out. Tomorrow is a holiday, but remember, global markets are trading, and uh, one can only hope that after the stability that we saw last week, it continues. all the way this week as well when we return to trade on wednesday morning back to you all right thanks a lot prashant for that well in market opinion ed yardeni of yardeni research says another fed reserve rate hike could hurt banks further meanwhile nilesha of kotak mahindra asset management says the upcoming macro events could cause volatility in the market listen in 
once again, the Federal Reserve is turning out to be the uh, key player here that affects uh, everybody else playing the game. Uh, the, the Fed is uh, likely to perhaps go up uh, by another quarter point. Uh, I think they should be done, actually, because I think we are continuing to see inflation moderate. And meanwhile, the inverted yield curve has been predicting since last summer that if the Fed continues to tighten, something might break in the financial system. And sure enough, we have a banking crisis. I don't think it's anywhere near the banking crisis we had in 2008. And their provision of liquidity to the banking system has been uh, quite substantial just in the past two weeks. And that means that their total assets have actually increased. Next year also, we will see a lot of volatility based on events. If those events turn out to be in favor of India, then certainly markets can deliver positive return because since almost August 21, markets haven't given any return. But if those events go against India, then markets may deliver negative return. We remain positive on the auto space, mainly first the passenger vehicle, then the commercial vehicle, and then the two-wheeler. In passenger vehicle, clearly there is a K-shape recovery. There is more buying at the mid to higher end than at the lower end. There is a waiting period. Commodity prices have cooled off and that has not been passed on to the consumers. So margins will be positively impacted. All right, on to the second headline now. Crude oil prices spiked after a surprise decision by the OPEC Plus to cut the output by 1.16 million barrels per day from May. Analysts have said that this move could push prices to $100 a barrel mark by the end of the year. The news helped oil producers clock gains while stocks of oil users witnessed some pressure. Manisha Gupta is here with the details. Manisha, over to you. Well, thank you for that. Yes, uh, that's right. The oil prices did surge after the OPEC and allies announced the price production cuts. Let's take a look at how the prices have fared in the month of March. Oil prices actually fell 5% in March, hit a 15-month lows of $70 a barrel, and the fall in crude prices could have been the reason that prompted the OPEC and allies to cut production. Well, the group trimmed production by 1.16 million barrels a day. The Saudi Arabia is calling this a move to precautionary measure in a bid to support oil market stability. The cuts which will start in the month of May this year will continue till the end of 2023. Russia and Saudi Arabia will cut production by nearly 500,000 barrels per day, while UAE, Kuwait and Iraq will cut production by anywhere between 200,000 to 100,000 or even lower for some of those countries. The OPEC's volume cuts now with all of this stands at 3.6 million barrels per day, which accounts for 3.7% of the global demand. The OPEC has cited an export halt from Turkey, the rebound in Chinese demand, the slowing U.S. inflation and the high U.S. crude production in the month of March as a reason for the volatility in crude oil prices. So the big question is on where are the crude oil prices headed by the end of this year? We have Goldman Sachs report coming over the weekend which says that the prices are headed to $100 a barrel. A similar report from JP Morgan also says that $96 a barrel is where they are expecting the crude oil prices to end this year at. CMC markets and energy aspects see the crude oil prices going to $100 a barrel as well. And then you have ING coating prices at 90, Vanda Insights at 80, 85, and Refinitiv talking about $80 a barrel as well is where the crude prices could be before we end this year. I'm not um, substantially revising my ex expectations for this year. Uh, as I've been saying, you know, last year, Brent average around $100 a barrel. Uh, for this year in 2023, I'm expecting um, it to be 15 to $20 lower year on year on average. We're looking at this point in time in the short term up to between $85 and $87, but perhaps longer term, we could see the oil prices actually weaken and we wouldn't be too surprised if we saw it between $70 and $80. All right, uh, that was the big headline, actually, the move on crude. But the third headline today is what happened with the auto sales for March. They were a mixed bag. Sales of passenger vehicles marginally declined quarter on quarter, but Maruti Suzuki uh, saw its SUV sales rise. Meanwhile, commercial vehicles showed a strong positive demand momentum as well. So let's quickly take you through some of the big auto trends that we noticed in this uh, month of March. <coughs> to start off, we had commercial vehicle sales which were pretty strong this time around. So whether it was Ashok Leyland or even Aisha Motors commercial vehicles, good double-digit growth is what we saw this time around. 
there was a, a growth of 19% that Ashok Leyland clocked in, while a growth of 35% that uh, Aisha Motors saw. Uh, the underperformer was Tata Motors. So you had Tata Motors CV sales, which were absolutely flat. Uh, but the management is quite optimistic. The management, um, Girish Vag, who's the executive director of Tata Motors, said that the demand for heavy trucks is quite robust and there are there's increased activity in e-commerce, construction and mining. There's higher replacement demand as well, advanced buying in anticipation of price hikes that have led to a strong growth in commercial vehicles. Apart from that, the second trend that I noticed was that two-wheeler sales have seen a good improvement as far as domestic sales are concerned. So Hero Motors saw sales growth of 15%, TVS Motors saw good growth of 22%. Channel checks indicate that Honda in the month of March faced a supply constraint and hence Honda's loss was TVS Motor and, um, you know, Hero's gain. So hence you saw that up move over there. By the way, TVS Electric Scooter IQ also saw very good run rates. So 15,000 uh, units sold in the month of March, second consecutive month of strong growth. And Royal Enfield also registered its highest ever sales in the year FY23. The other big trend I noticed was that SUV sales were very strong this time around. Uh, m and reported record high SUV sales in the month of March with a growth of 31%. And Maruti says that their SUV market share is picking up. It's currently at 11% and they hope that it would reach 25%. Uh, they've guided for it to reach 25% by the end of FY24. And finally, talking about Maruti, the one thing that stood out for me in the interaction we had is that uh, there are red flags in the auto industry. So that's what Maruti said. Uh, they are quite cautious. They said that these red flags could dampen the market sentiment further. So let's listen in uh, to what the management told us earlier. I think the growth of 20% plus uh, in uh, next year uh, may not be likely. It's unlikely that we're going to see this type of growth. There are some looming red flags, which we are now increasingly uh, monitoring because uh, we believe they could have a negative impact on the overall demand next year. Uh, that, that includes first and foremost, the overall economy growth itself. You know, uh, the auto industry uh, uh, growth is very, very highly correlated with uh, the, uh, the per capita uh, GDP growth. Our exports uh, for Latin America, Middle East and Africa have been steady and strong. And immediately next year, we do see a improvement in our market share thanks to the SUV vehicles that uh, we have introduced and the sales of which uh, both of Franks and the Jimny will start uh, uh, in April end. The combined effect of that should increase our SUV market share. Last year, our SUV market share was just about uh, 11 and But um, in the quarter four of this year, when we have seen the good availability of Brezza and the Vitara, it's already about 18%. And uh, going forward next year, I think uh, we could be, uh, we can uh, go up to 25%. We have been able to clock almost 33,600 units, which is a growth of 20%. The industry has been only clocking growth of only 12%. So overall, I think it has been very, very good for us. FY23, as you know, has been very, very strong for the industry. When I uh, spoke to you a few months back, we were talking about a growth of about 5 to 6%. Then we upped the guidance to about 7 to 8%. Finally, the industry has been very strong, clocking all-time high growth of 9,45,000 units, which is a growth of 12%. Very happy to share with you that the Mahindra growth has been 16% over this. So we have got some valuable share point gain. Our market share is upwards of 41% and we have gained 1.2% market share in the whole of FY23. Okay, let's slip into a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a jiffy with some of the other top headlines of the day. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still with us on Markets Today. Let's go straight to the rest of the headlines that we're tracking for you now. The fourth headline today, IGL and MGL slipped after the government deferred the APM price revision. In fact, uh, there was quite a bit of a slide that we saw. MGL was down almost 6.5% by the end of trade. Surbhi is here to get you up to speed of what brokerages have made of the stock. Thanks for that. So IGL and MGL is in focus today. That is because the government has kept the domestic APM gas price unchanged at $8.57 per MMBTU till further order. Now, the expectation was that the Kirit Parak Committee recommendations would be accepted by April 1st, which would have led to a cut in a domestic APM prices to $6.50 per MMBTU. Kirit Parak told CNBC TV18 that he expects the recommendations to be accepted soon. 
City says while the continued delay could create a near term overhang for the CGD stocks, the pause in prices on a provisional basis suggests that the cabinet approval of the recommendation could be just a matter of time. Any modifications to these recommendations need to be monitored. They continue to view the stance on government towards CGD sector as favorable and they prefer MGL and IGL. The top gas pick is Gale, as that could also be a key beneficiary of a lower APM gas prices. Jeffrey say while the delay was unexpected, they expect the new price notification to be announced in the near future. All right, speaking to CNBC TV 18, Gas Committee Chair Kirit Parekh said that he's hopeful of the cabinet clearing most of the panel's recommendations soon. He also added that the time frame for this remains unknown. Listen in. I have been just, I have heard uh, from people that yes, the cabinet is considering it, it's likely to be approved. Mm -hmm. But when it will be is, uh, is anybody's guess. We have said that by 1st January 2027, mm. all, everything should be market determined. I'm quite hopeful that it will be accepted. Okay, and here's to the fifth headline. A whole host of banks posted their quarterly business updates today. A strong update pushed CSB Bank higher, while a weaker one hurt Karnataka Bank. Abhishek Kothari is here with a wrap on both banks' stocks' performance. Abhishek. Uh, well, to begin with, you know, Karnataka Bank, uh, negative surprise coming in from their uh, loan book has shrunk uh, quarter on quarter. So deposit momentum has remained healthy, but it's uh, lower than what the industry level is, growing at 8.7% YOY and about 3.3% quarter on quarter. The loan growth now that surprised negatively, growing by just 6.2% YOY and a decline of 3.7% uh, quarter on quarter. So the CASA or low-cost deposit mobilization has remained largely in line with what their deposit momentum has been been 8.7 percent growth yoy and about 6.7 percent quarter on quarter so casa ratio flat on a yoy basis but it has improved on a sequential basis csb bank strong business momentum continued for second quarter in a row the deposits are up uh, 21 and a half percent yoy and about 8 percent sequentially the casa is up 16 percent yoy but about 10.7 percent sequentially so the casa ratio has improved on a sequential basis advances growth remained robust despite a strong Strong uh, Q3 that they had up about 30.3 percent YOY and about 11.75 percent uh, quarter on quarter. The gold loan portfolio continued to show strong performance, growing at almost 48 percent YOY and about 10 and a half percent sequentially. While X of gold loan, the loan growth was at close to 13 percent quarter on quarter. So strong business momentum for CSV Bank. Back to you. Okay, the other big mover on the downside today was KPIT Tech. It slipped 12 percent after JP Morgan initiated an underweight rating on the stock. Nimesh is standing by with all the details. Nimesh, what went wrong? JP Morgan is seeing two, uh, two big catalysts uh, or derating catalysts for, for KPIT and that's why they've initiated coverage in the stock with an underweight rating and a target price of 520. JP Morgan uh, is the lowest on the street in terms of target price on KPIT. Now the two key catalysts are the derating catalysts, so to speak. One, they believe that you know the, the growth is likely to slow down beyond FY20, FY24 to less than 20%. And, uh, you know, the scarcity premium with the IPO of Tata Technologies is now going to go away. So that's that's the first key reason. The second reason is, uh, you know, they see challenges in terms of growth. And, uh, you know, KPIT needs to uh, win orders every year to maintain a growth above 20%. And that's going to be a key challenge because auto is a cyclical industry. And, uh, you know, they, they, no, I mean, it's very difficult to give that kind of benefit of doubt to KPIT given that it's trading at a 50 times valuation in terms of FY24 earnings. So that's that's the other key reason why they see a derating catalyst for, for KPIT technologies. Now, as I said, you know, it's an anti-consensus view coming in from JP Morgan and hence the stock is directed 5% uh, into this trade. I was looking at the brokerage recommendations. There are, uh, there are, there are 10 uh, brokers who are recommending a buy. Uh, one, has a, one has a hold and only three brokerages have a sell recommendation on KPIT technologies. And as I said, you know, KPIT uh, uh, with uh, JP Morgan's note today of 520 target price, that's the lowest in the street as far as KPIT is concerned. Uh, the, the buy recommendations have an average target price between 750 to 1050, so that's the wide range. But, uh, you know, the stock is reacting today largely on the back of anti-consensus note from JPM where they believe uh, there, are ch there are challenges for KPIT and hence an underweight rating and a target price of 520 a potential 40% downside from current levels. All right. Uh, the other stock in focus was GMR Infra. It gained 7% today after analysts turned positive on the stock following news flow that came through. In case you're wondering what it was, Vivek is here with more details. Vivek.
Well, that's right. So GMR Infra is the stock, you know, it's been buzzing of late. Stock's been doing quite well. Uh, so quite a bit of news flow, you know, especially towards the end of FI23 as far as the company is concerned. You know, significant fundraising as well as group simplification is something that is aiding or unlocking value as per what, you know, Kotak Institutional Equities is saying. Now, first, you know, having a look at the news flow itself, uh, the company recently raised close to 2,900 crore via the FCCB route and the conversion price for this particular, um, you know, fundraise was at 43 0.67 rupees a share. Along with that, the company also said that it is looking to merge its subsidiary GMR Airports Limited with itself, which is the airport platform unlisted entity. So now GMR Airports Infra becomes the airport's listed entity and the group simplification works in a manner in which the shareholding comes to the GMR group at 33.7%. The group ADP uh, from France holds around 32.3% and the public shareholding, the remainder is around 34%. Now what is Kotak Institutional Equity saying? They're saying that uh, number one, they have a buy rating on the stock with a target of close to 45 rupees. They're saying that GMR has now delivered on its promise of simplifying the group structure and group ADP will be bringing in close to 3400 crore of investment into the consortium. So this particular simplification leads to access to lower cost capital which they believe will lead to significant savings and also improved upstreaming of cash flows. So what they've done is they've retained the value of the existing airports and increased the fair value of the stock on higher value of the new airport wins that the GMR is expected to get. What about RVNL Vivek? That stock surged in trade as well. The company has won multiple orders from Vande Bharat train set manufacturing and maintenance to an LOA for a highway project in Jharkhand as well. Tell us a little more about that. Well, that's right. You know, so RVNL actually is the stock in focus. What's actually happened over here is that uh, the company has managed to bag and get onto its foot multiple orders in FI23. So if you take it, uh, you know, from March 30th onwards, you know, the company has uploaded multiple notifications to the exchanges. On March 30th, uh, remember the company which was earlier declared as the lowest bidder along with the, you know, Russian JV partner for the one day Bharat trains. Uh, they have gone ahead and put that onto their book. So it's now part of the order book. Uh, this is for the one day Bharat at train set manufacturing come the maintenance order. March 31st, the company along with its consortium partner got the letter of award for a highway project in Jharkhand, project cost of close to 1,272 crore. March 31st, another order win, you know, emerged as the lowest bidder for an expressway contract in West Bengal. Cost of the project is close to 721 crore. Remember, RBNL has consistently maintained that they you know, expect to maintain their order book about the 1 lakh crore mark. And this is something that is playing out, especially in the last week of FI23, where a lot of the order wins uh, for a lot of the infrastructure players are getting booked. Okay, sticking with brokerage commentary, PB Fintech lost 3% after CLSA downgraded the stock. Yash Jain is here with the details. Yash, over to you. Well, uh, it's a very interesting note which uh, CLS has written on PB Fintech. Uh, what they've done is they've downgraded the stock to outperform from buy earlier. But the target price has been raised higher to 710 rupees from 660 rupees earlier. The new target price gives you an upside potential of about 36%. Uh, what CLSS says is that the stock has rallied 60%. In the last five months, that has been a result of two things. A uh, company demonstrated a part to profitability. And the second one, pressure from selling shareholders has eased. Now, they also say on the qualitative side that lower burn rate in the new initiatives will aid faster break-even. Also, key value driver will be growth in the platform business. On the valuation side, they say that the framework factors in share of premium to increase to 4.6% and 8.4% by FI26 and FI40 from 2.1% currently and they expect a 33% CAGR for insurance premium between FI23 to FI26. Uh, importantly, CLSA observes that new initiatives for the company at this point of time is not a game changer. But one thing that they say uh, should be uh, tracked going forward should be uh, the regulatory changes uh, and the disruption which they get uh, on the competitive front, especially on the side of Bhima Suga. Okay, thanks a lot, Yash, for that. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Markets Today. Have a great day. Thanks a lot for watching and good evening.